Hello everyone, uh, my name is David Brooks. I'm here with another Classical Mechanics 2 uh, problem example. And the basic idea of this one um, is we have a hoop um, that's anchored at some point uh, the origin and it rotates around this origin, the whole hoop does, um, with uh, some constant angular velocity omega. And on that hoop is a mass that is allowed to move frictionlessly around that hoop. And the basic idea is to try and find an equation of motion for that mass. And so I've, I've defined a few things here um, that's, that are really more to do with the setup of the problem. Um, firstly, I've called this angle uh, theta, but theta is just omega t. It's given to us that that frequency is constant. Uh, I've also called this angle here phi. Uh, we know, of course, the mass doesn't move radially within the hoop, so these r's are constant. Uh, and this uh, setup might be a bit outside the scope of this uh, problem, since the main objective is to do this uh, from a Lagrangian perspective. Um, but you might want to go ahead and convince yourself that uh, these Cartesian coordinates work, um, that the center of the hoop moves about with as r cosine theta and r sine theta, and so the mass itself moves about like that, summed with these terms involving themselves the sum of the angle theta and the angle phi. Now, now that we have all of that set up, uh, we need to begin thinking about how to set up our Lagrangian. Lagrangian, however you say that. Now it's given to us that this hoop exists in a horizontal plane, so there's no gravitational potential energy, there's no springs or anything like that, so we know that u is just some constant, and since we can define u wherever we want, I can go ahead and call u just equal to zero. Now, uh, that's the easy part. What we need now is kinetic energy, and as we know, kinetic energy is one-half mass v squared. Now, in order to try and get v squared, uh, we're going to need x dot and y dot, because that's equal to one-half m x dot squared plus y dot squared. Fairly straightforward. So, we just need to take care of deriving both of these with respect to time. So we know, just from elementary calculus, x dot equals, let's see, the derivative of this is negative r sine theta, but theta is omega t, so we're going to get a spare omega out in front, and then minus our quantity omega plus phi dot because of course both theta and phi depend on t times the sine of theta plus phi and similarly y dot is equal to r omega cosine theta plus r omega plus phi dot cosine th excuse me cosine theta plus phi now uh, you might be looking that, at that and thinking about uh, all kinds of horrible algebra that's going to come when we need to take the sum of the squares and uh, you're a little bit right but thankfully uh, with the magic of uh, recording, I can prepare some of this beforehand. So, uh, you can see here, I just uh, v squared, x dot squared, plus y dot squared, and these are the two terms we just found. This is y dot, and this is x dot. And we take the quantity squared of both of them, of course. And so this is just expanding it out. Uh, you can see here, uh, this term is just this squared, 
this is the cross product between these two, etc., etc. Um, and so, if you can convince yourself that uh, this works out to be this, then I guess you're uh, you're set so far. And if you're like me, uh, you immediately see some cosine squared plus sine squared terms, and we know uh, that's always defined to be zero, uh, to be one rather. So this term simplifies right off the bat, and pulling this term and this term together, we can simplify this, because even cosine squared of theta plus phi and sine squared of theta plus phi is still, by definition, 1. But we have these uh, gross cross terms here, and we can see this one's going to be a sine theta times sine theta plus phi, and a cosine theta times a cosine theta plus phi. And so we need to look up some of the uh, harder trig identities here. And we can see here that sine of two quantities is sine A cosine B plus cosine A sine B. And we have a similar identity for the cosine of a sum. And so just transposing that here, we've got our nice clean omega squared r squared term and a similar term from, uh, from the other cosine sine square sum. And then we've got this term here, expanded out to look pretty gross, but it simplifies again in the line below it, another sum of squares, and this term here cancels with this term here. Uh, cosine theta, sine theta, cosine theta, sine theta, sine phi, sine phi. So this cancels out with this, and we're left with the much prettier omega squared r squared r squared quantity omega plus phi dot squared plus 2 omega r squared quantity omega plus phi dot cosine phi. Could be a lot worse, but it still makes for a little bit of messy algebra here. Uh, we end up with, of course, the Lagrangian is the kinetic energy minus the potential, but our potential is still zero. So we end up with something looking like 1 half m times this quantity, omega squared r squared plus r squared omega plus phi dot squared plus 2 omega r squared omega plus phi dot cosine phi. And I just had to make sure I copied that correctly. It looks, it looks correct. So, uh, here we can set up, of course, our um, actual Lagrangian equations. And we've only got the one because we're, uh, our only real coordinate here is phi. Um, so, the derivative of our Lagrangian with respect to phi is equal to, we can see that this term does not depend on phi, neither does this term, this is the only one that does. So multiplying this 1 half times this 2 knocks them out, so we're left with an m omega r squared omega plus phi dot, but this is the derivative of cosine, so we're left with a sine phi and a negative out front. And we know that that's going to be equal to the time derivative of the phi dot derivative of L, which is the same thing as the time derivative of... We can see that this term is going to drop out, but this term will not. So we have 1 half m... Ooh. <laughs> m is not in our denominator. 
one half m r squared times two omega plus phi dot. Simple derivative there. And of course that two and that one half cancel. And then we have uh, this term over here with a phi dot. And so the the one half again cancels with this two. So we're left with an m omega r squared times the cosine of phi, because of course this omega term does not depend on phi dot, so it drops out, and this phi dot term is only linear. So the time derivative of all of that is then equal to m r squared phi double dot. You can see again that uh, this omega term is going to die out when we take the time derivative. And then we're going to get an m omega r squared sine of phi. And of course, chain rule gives us a phi dot term. And when we took the derivative of the cosine, we got a negative out front. And of course we know that these two terms have to be equal because, I mean, uh, the by definition, the phi derivative and the time derivative of the phi dot derivative of the Lagrangian are equal. So we end up with something like negative m omega r squared omega plus phi dot sine phi equals m r squared phi dot dot minus m omega r squared sine phi phi dot. Now with a bit of inspection we can see that this phi dot term is the same thing as this phi dot term. This whole thing is equal to this whole thing if we were to expand out this omega and phi dot, and the omega term would survive, but the phi dot would not. So we can eliminate this term from this side to eliminate this term from this side. We can also divide by mr squared to get something like that. And what we end up with is phi double dot plus omega squared sine phi is equal to zero. Now that, if you're a, if you're a physics major, I think uh, your spider senses are tingling right now, because of course in small uh, phi approximations, that means this is just a very easy to solve uh, differential equation. And of course that means it will oscillate about uh, this this uh, stable equilibrium over here with a frequency and omega is already taken so I'll call it omega tilde is equal to just root of omega squared is just omega. So this seemingly complex and difficult to uh, wrap your head around physical um, sort of situation. It just boils down very simply to the movement of this hoop, the frequency with which this hoop uh, rotates, is quite literally the same as the frequency with which this mass will oscillate around a stable equilibrium. And uh, I just thought that was very interesting, wanted to share with all of you uh, that little physics problem. So thank you all for listening. Uh, and good luck on all future exams.